I'm from Minnesota, uh, as Peter is, so I know something like this in snow, in snow but wow. Um, I drove up here and it was rain, 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 and then I got to about an hour away and it was snow, 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 snow. So that was kind of fun. Um, so let's see if this shows up or not. Needs a little bit of uh, massaging. Nope, no, I got nothing. Nope, oh, I got go. something. It wants me to join the wireless network. Hey, that looks better. Cool. This is also my first time using Keynote, so Peter may have to help me if something goes wrong. But I hope that nothing will go wrong. So, uh, I'm going to talk about open source and, in specific, how open source can still happen on a small scale. Um, but uh, first, I would like to talk about myself a little bit because I'm this crazy guy. Who am I? Why am I here? So, so when you said small scale, by contradiction, you, you think we are big, big scale? Well, not necessarily that you are big scale, but that open that. What, uh, I'll get to that. Okay. I'll get to what I mean by big scale. Okay. Don't worry. So who am I? This is going to be completely non-computer related because I think that's kind of funny. Well, I love sailing. That picture is a little dark, but uh, that's me and a friend, another uh, mutual friend of Peter's, actually sailing. I also like ice boating, so you can do that winter, summer, winter, summer. I don't know if anyone's ever seen an ice boat, but uh, it's like a sailboat on ice. They go 50 miles per hour. They're pretty cool. I also like to program a little bit, um, and so <laughs> that, that's why I'm actually talking to you guys. So, open source. What do you think of when you first think of open source? And I'm sure you all have many wonderful ideas. First thing I think of is Linux. Uh, well, what is Linux? As you all know, it's very big. There are many, many developers. Uh, a quick look on Wikipedia told me that there were over 10,000 lines of code. I think that's, no, 10, maybe more. I may have that number wrong. Many, many, many thousands of lines of code. That's wrong. Anyways, millions of users. It's on your phone. It's in your car. Ignore the lines of code number, because I've written something that's 10,000 lines of code. Um, open source. Uh, more open source. Apache Foundation also runs large global things. If you go to a server, chances are it's an Apache server. And I'm sure there are members in this room who have written software for these kind of large uh, open source projects. But uh, some more. GNOME, KDE. Uh, actually, a show of hands. Who here has used GNOME before? Okay, who here has used KDE before? Uh, okay, fewer. <laughs> we can talk about that after class. <laughs> I love GNOME too. They're both fantastic. And if you say it differently, I'm sorry that I'm offending you. Anyways, uh, now let's think a little smaller than that. So, a lot of my work with open source has been in a much smaller setting. And I think that's still a very valid outlet for open source. Um, we're thinking one to ten people. We're thinking a few thousand lines of code or fewer. We're thinking projects that maybe only touch 50 people in total, and, and why they're maybe still important to have and be open rather than some kind of closed platform. So this is a project, um, oh man, these are all so dark, whatever, you'll have to imagine. Um, this is a project that I worked on last semester as a part of an engineering class. Uh, I'm an RA at Swarthmore, which means I have this wheel, it's a, a wheel on my door that I turn physically that says kind of where I am. But my dorm is 15 minutes from campus. And so I can't really tell you anything more than I'm, uh, you know, on campus or in the dorm, which kind of sucks. So I took an Arduino and I took a display and uh, developed something where I can send uh, commands to my computer in my dorm and that will update this display is on the front of my door and it will say where I am. That's all open and I'm trying to get some other people in my dorm to use it and maybe somebody at another college will want to do it. So it's online and it's... Uh, open to use. This is another example where uh, more people can use it even though only a few are developing it. So uh, a friend and I decided uh, to <coughs> write a really quick, we had desktops and they went into uh, a screensaver where you had to enter your password to get out of the screensaver. But often what I wanted to do is just suspend it and uh, because of technical limitations closing the lid of my laptop wouldn't suspend it. Um, so, I wrote a little applet for uh, a KDE technology called Plasma. You have this on your screensaver and you can click it. It's open source. I know of 50 people, plus or minus, that use it. Um, and they wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't just make it av available freely. Um, it's very small, 100 lines of code, nothing big. Uh, let's go to this. So this is a room at Swarthmore College. It's still very dark. It's right around my computer. Um, it's got a bunch of computers in it. It's got a big table in it. 
there's another room behind it that has a, a big server room. It's got maybe, I don't know, four or five servers. This is all student run. Uh, it's a group called SCCS, uh, the Swarthmore College Computer Society. It's probably similar to Archos here, except uh, a lot smaller. Uh, and we develop a number of things for uh, Swarthmore uh, students in general. We, have, we host Git repositories, uh, and we host mailing lists and uh, websites and group sites and things like that, and WordPress accounts. And uh, all of our code is available online. And I've had uh, inquiries from people uh, back in Minnesota and people in Canada uh, and elsewhere in the world who've said, hey, I saw that project. That's interesting. I want to take it, and I want to do something with it. So for example, our Git infrastructure. Uh, Git, for those of you who don't know, is a way to track changes in your files. Uh, and we kind of developed a very minimal set of scripts that'll let you, uh, as a system administrator, put Git on your server and uh, allow your users to like create Git repositories and uh, do permissions uh, through uh, FACLs, which are um, file system permissions, lower level file system permissions. And uh, so that kind of stuff is all open online. Uh, this lab, in general, um, is a not really related to open source, but is related to computing and computers. We offer shell accounts and we offer uh, other services because the college doesn't provide those. Um, and that's all done through students and student funding. It's, it's cool. So I hear that you guys have similar things here. Um, wow, did I just blow through that? No, I have somewhat time. So um, questions about me. This was kind of small-scale open source, kind of me. Uh, that's another little app that I'm working on for course listings. Um, I can show you that. It's on my phone. Any questions about me or what uh, Swarthmore or things in general? Wow, no questions. Yes. I last question. Who supports the, the, the organization, SCCS? Uh, that's a good question. So SCCS, uh, we have a portion of our tuition, everybody's tuition, is taken out for group uh, funding. and. Uh, I don't remember what it is, it's a very small part, but when you combine together, we have 1,500 students, when you combine together 1,500 of those small things, that's a lot. So there's an organization called SBC that kind of hands out funding to groups that are interested in doing something. And so every year we create a budget proposal and we submit that to SBC and we argue like, this is why we think we need another server, or this is why we think we need money to host uh, game parties, or this is why we think we need money to uh, provide a new you know, projectors so people can do a presentation in here. Uh, it's kind of cool. Um, I've heard of something similar at Carleton College, which is the same size. I don't know if you guys have something like that here, but I found it very, very nice. Um, it's just 10 guys who run it at CCS. We have a web page. I can show you the web page. I can show you our Git stuff. So, Git.scc. Oh, I'm not on Oh, I can get you. That's, um, I don't have to. Well, the website is not too hard to remember. Get that SCCS if you want to look at it. Half of you have laptops out in anyways. Andrew? He yes. Has, uh, he has a question. Oh, yeah. What's your name? Uh, Graylin. Graylin, cool. Uh, you, you had talked about how you had people from other places and countries finding yeah. your stuff. Uh, what did you... Where did you put it such that they found it? And did you do any like promotion stuff? Or where is it just... Yeah, so that's a really good question, and that's actually something that I forgot to mention, but how do you promote yourself as a small open source developer? So there are two channels um, that I've used in the past that have been really helpful. The first one um, is there's a site called Planet, no, not Planet, uh, kdapps.org. There's a similar one, gnomeapps.org and Linux apps and something like that. And uh, so posting... Hmm? Either. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Andrew. You know, keep, keep yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, and so putting them there allows more people to see them. I didn't actually promote any of these things. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of large developer communities are actually very open. I give up. I, you give it's up? It's too difficult. These All right. are too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you too, you too, Peter. <laughs> is Peter the big Mac guy in here? Oh, oh dear. He, oh dear. He, uh, he is. I is not known as Peter. He's known as I Peter. Okay. Well, it's okay. Although you see me using a Mac here, uh, ninety-eight percent of what I do is on Linux computers. So I promise you, he only has infected me a little bit. <laughs> um, 
the other thing is that really just blogging about it is a big deal. So I have uh, a blog that sadly hasn't been updated in a while, but uh, where I kind of just posted little updates on what I did. And uh, I showed it to some friends, and they showed it to some friends, and pretty soon there was this random guy asking me a question. Uh, I found that having a very open web presence, if you search for Andrew Strami, you'll find me, uh, actually helps you a lot with that. And it took me a kind of a while to figure out you know, what I wanted to be as a presence on the web, because it's scary. Like you have, uh, at least it's scary for me, to have like a whole bunch of information about you online. But I think that's how we're connecting now, especially for software people. Cool. So that's what I have. Thanks for letting me present here. Yeah. I just have a question about uh, your Arduino project. Yeah. How is the Arduino connected to the computer? Was it wireless or did you have it plugged directly? So right now, um, the Arduino has this concept of shields and they're like hot pluggable modules. So what I did is uh, there's a shield that uses Ethernet and that's plugged in right now. But they also have wireless shields available. And then you can create, you can have a prototype board uh, that can let you create your own shield. So I grabbed a prototype board and did all the wiring and some extra hardware needed for the display that I was using. Uh, and did that as well. So right now, it requires an Ethernet connection and requires power as well, but I've looked at how to do that without said things. So basically what it does is it opens up a small uh, server. It's not really a web server. It's on a different port. It's using my own protocol, but it's basically a TCP server, and you can send commands to it, and I implemented something on the desktop side that lets you kind of either draw an image or send a specified message and it will uh, display those. And we can totally talk about that. Cool. Thanks.